Hi guys, welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. You're going to learn from the OG, the guy who started this genre of vocal producer. Uh, he's also a hit songwriter. He's my brother. Uh, you're going to meet Ku Carell, uh, a returning champion whose client Rihanna has been very busy on the Oscars and Super Bowl and everything else. Ku Carell coming right up. But first, a little bit of homework. You got one final week, maybe a little less, to enter the Nugent Producer Bundle, the audio giveaway. You want to win that producer bundle that will help you with your workflow. PensadosPlace.tv forward slash giveaway is where you go. And then we're announcing right at the end of the week. So get it in, get it in now. Also at Harmon, they're doing a professional audio giveaway series. You can win mics, headphones, condensers, uh, condenser mics, studio monitors. You want to enter at pensadosplace.tv forward slash win hyphen Harmon. Enter your info, win some stuff. The other thing that you need to be doing is packing your bags for NAM. NAM is going to be off the chain and we're going to be helping to make it off the chain. The dates of NAM are April 13th to the 15th, where you register for badges is at registration.nam.org. Get that in. And then for our events, Thursday, April 13th from 1 to 2, we're going to do Pensado Palooza, where we give away a ton of gear and we party hardy. And then you hear from some superstar guests, like from Silk Sonic, Brody Brown. He's going to be there. He's going to tell you all about the hits he does for Silk Sonic as part of 1500 and everything else. Another special guest we can't announce just yet, but we will shortly on Friday, April 14th from 12 to one. Now remember Thursday is from one to two. Friday is from 12 to one. Uh, one of the pillars of our community, Josh Goodwin will be there. He goes from Bieber to bad bunny. He's going to share all that stuff with you. And we're going to put Harmony Samuels together with sons of Sonics they go from Ariana Grande to Ty Dolla Size to Alan Stone to Afro Beats. Ton of information you get, ton of badass folks. Um, and then the prizes that you can win, they range from some hot Genelec monitors that we just got control of, uh, AKG mics, studio monitors from JBL, plugins from Acoustica Audio from people like Mike Dean, Greg Wells, Josh Goodwin, Josh is announcing his new plugin, Dave Pensado and more. Immersive audio plugins from Embody VR. Uh, new Gen Audio's got a Master Check plugin. We've got stuff from GPU audio and even more coming. So that's Pensado Palooza for those two days. Then on Saturday, we got a different thing for you. That's going to be called Mentor Madness. It's from two to three o'clock and you get to come sit with your mentor for three minutes or so, ask your question, get your answer. We'll make sure you get a selfie, move on to the next one. What kind of folks will be there? How about Travis Barker's engineer, K Thrash? How about the legendary Battle Cat? How about Nikki John Pabon, who is with Jack Harlow? How about Whitney Tabor, co-founder of Girls Make Beats? How about Baines, an incredible mixer? Malski, the Rams DJ, uh, Becky Barabas, who from Harmon will tell you about artist relations and what should happen. Dro, an amazing engineer, is cornering a market. TZO, another badass. Howie Weinberg, a mastering legend. Daniel Engen, who runs Electric Field Studios, one of our favorites. Uh, I just got a hit from Mixed by Ali. He's going to pop through. Come learn. We're going to hang. We're going to learn. It's going to be interactive. We're going to hang in the lobby afterwards. So you got to get to NAM and you got to get to our events and you got to get in line early. It's going to be special. It's going to be unique. You can walk out with gear, walk out with education, walk out with pictures of your event. You can learn stuff, maybe even get a job. Who knows? But you can't if you don't come. So we'll see you there. We're going to have a ball. Um, Dave and I are also going to be at the GPU Audio Innovation Lounge, that's over in the Pro Audio Hall. We're going to do that Friday from 3 to 4, have a conversation with you. Genelec is also involved in that. Uh, GPU is doing crazy, crazy innovation in audio. You should know about that. It's a look into the future. And you're going to have fun. And that's why we love doing this stuff. So get there early. Don't miss it. And now without further ado... Um, People know him as a vocal producer, but they don't know that he's a five-time Grammy Award winner. 
He's worked with everybody that you can imagine. He is the OG of vocal producers. He is a great guy, and we just love him, and you're going to love his information. Without further ado, Kukarel. What's up, you guys? What's up, Herb? What's up, Dave? Hey, man, you invented the, you invented the genre, man. You invented man. it. So it's the it. genre that we're talking about is being a vocal producer. Um, that should not take away from his other talents as a hit songwriter, as a guy that talent looks up to. He's got an amazing facility in L.A. Um, and what you're going to learn about Coop, besides the fact that we're going to talk about Rihanna's halftime performance, of which she does not make a move without him vocally, and um, is somebody that has taken the craft and never lost its essence has distilled the simplicity of it and makes the art speak first, not the tricks. Coop, yeah. did I get it right? Absolutely. One hundred percent. Let's start with the most recent thing. I, I know we talked. Um, and first of all, let me just say as somebody who is a fan and somebody who produces things, not on that scale and all that stuff, but just drives me crazy. I thought Rihanna's performance and the production of that performance was spectacular. Oof, man. Yeah. You and me both. What yeah. was it like to be there? And she called you and wanted you there, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I'm, uh, you know, obviously I produce uh, all of Bree's vocals for uh, for the albums, you know, and, you know, just I think there's, there's just a there's a comfortability there um, vocally you know, and, and just, you know, just getting her ready, you know, yeah. just being a part. And she, and also she has a, you know, she has a, a vocal coach, a guy that, that warms her up and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. there's also a comfortability of having, you know, somebody that when you, when you're in that lane of doing your vocals, you have that person there to just kind of, you know, just kind of feed off her energy. I, our, our whole thing is, is it's, you know, what, like with all the people that I produce, um, we just have a rapport, you know, there it's like a, it's a, it's a rapport of just, just comfortable energy, you know, just, just knowing, Oh, okay. You know, cause just, just one word can, or one statement can go a long way. And, and that statement is, Oh man, you got it. You got this. Like, you, you know, <laughs> of course we've got the technical stuff. Of course we got to focus on all that, but you know, I, I feel like what I've learned is that you know, with the artists, they, they just want to feel like they, of course they got all that stuff going on in their head. You yeah. know, we got to do this. I got to do this. I'm, I'm working on this. I'm working on this. But what they, what a lot of times, what they don't genuinely get is somebody that genuinely just goes, Oh man, you got this. Like, this is what mm -hmm. you do. Like, mm -hmm. Come on. You know, I know for me, when somebody comes up to me and goes, if I'm nervous about something or if I'm concerned with something that I have to do and somebody just pulls up and goes, Oh man, you got this. You do this all day. You're you like, mm -hmm. what? you're mm -hmm. tripping. I go, ah, yes, that's mm -hmm. right. All right, here we go. So um, with that, that's what that that's what that was. And for me, it was extremely humbling to be asked to, you know, be a part of one of the biggest moments in her career, mm -hmm. um, you know, and to be there in the capacity that I that I get to that I'm blessed to be able to do every mm -hmm. single day. You know, um, it is really interesting. You know, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And I'm never it never gets old being able to sit and look at the position that I'm in. Oh, man. Like be able to sit back and look at it as opposed to, as opposed to seeing for seeing it for what the clout is. You know, mm -hmm. of course, you know, you know, I, you know, I hear all the time. Oh, man, you're the goat and boom, 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 boom. It's like, yeah, that, that's that's cool. But what's really humbling is when you sit back and you go, wait a second. I get to work with one of the biggest artists in the game. Yes, oh, like, thank you. Thank you. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it's really one, one, of, one of the things, the, one of the really highlights that, out there, aren't they? <laughs> one of the highlights that came out of this, this, uh, you know, doing the Super Bowl is I was sitting in the back, uh, in the back waiting to, you know, just to work with Ree and uh, Jay Brown, which who is her manager and also uh, managed me for a while. Yeah. That he, 
you know, we were just talking and we have great conversation. He said, do you realize that, do you ever think about uh, you're the only person that gets to cut Ree's vocals? And I was like, are you kidding me? Of course I think about that. I think about that every single day. Like that's a huge, it's a huge blessing, you know, to be able to, to have that as, you know, part of my credentials. Like that's, a, that's amazing. And, it, and it's not just, it's not just because, you know, I know how to produce vocals. It's because I know how to produce vocals. And I also know how to bring something of the spirit that helps change and make, make uh, her performances extremely magical, mm -hmm. you know, on top of what she does, because she's all on, all on her own. She's absolutely incredible. Right. I find that uh, uh, I've been blessed to be in your studio a number of times. We share a lot of brother to brother things from the first yeah. time you're ever on the show eight years yeah. ago, we've just yeah. been yeah. locked. Yeah. And one of the things that you do is you foment trust. Mm. And when somebody who has everything coming at them, mm. you know, like when you're that big, yeah. um, the inner, 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 inner circle, that trust is something that, is only conferred on a few and yeah. it is precious and yeah. and then when it converts to they have to have you it goes beyond trust into something else it's all so anyways so beyond yeah. your skill set yeah. you have this ability to connect it and i think it is uh i think part of it is that beyond what you do you're also an artist mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. and as an artist there's a there's a there's a connection there and um it was really interesting. I was watching the halftime performance with a bunch of musical folks who were in a bunch of musical and political folks who had various ages, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so there was one subset of people who were like, oh, you know, man, ah, uh, you know. And and then I was like, are you crazy? I, you know, <laughs> and I started breaking it all down. Oh, cool. I was yeah, like, yeah. You know, yeah, hasn't yeah. performed in seven years and performing yeah. up in the air. And yeah. if you think that you can right. remember all that choreography as nuanced and as subtle as it is and not miss a mm -hmm. B, not, a, not miss a thing. And, and also because we interviewed the NFL people, we actually got to interview the NFL in the room. That was where they produced that. Mm, okay. What nobody really understands is how much emphasis and how many people are on that 13 minutes yeah, for absolutely. months. Yeah, absolutely. Like the, the pressure is through the roof. Yeah. You're going to come yeah. back, I haven't performed in seven years. I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm going to just, I'm going to do this way up in the air. Absolutely. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to go back up in the air. And then she threw in the makeup thing. And I was like, exactly. I was exactly. done. I almost. Star. Anyways. All Nothing right. but so, a star. Absolutely. If you talk to her, tell her two podcasters who she has no idea who it is. <laughs> think that she that she's incredible. I will. I definitely okay. will do that. No doubt. No Could, doubt. What's 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 the best way to get a great performance from your client? Um something specific like like you like you when they come like a, a bottle of booze or something uh, you know i mean <laughs> he's a what you, you're, you're brilliant at it you know i mean i never had an opportunity to ask you these questions you know because we were always uh yeah but anyway is there a concrete way that you like to to approach an artist to get the most out of them in terms of feeling and emotion and those types of things I think for me, it's I like to just let them first and foremost be who they are. You know, uh, of course, of course, it's you know, I have to craft their vocal to sound uh, like something. But I don't. The biggest thing is making sure that I'm not trying to craft their vocal to sound like I'm singing it as a producer. Um, I think not. I think I know one of the plus one of the great things about um be, being a vocal producer that is splintered off from being the actual producer of the record mm -hmm. is that I don't have any identity in the process. Mm. The only identi identity I have in the process is making sure that I capture their identity and, and make sure that that's what's recorded. Um, because, you know, like the, 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 
you know, me as a vocal producer, I'm not taking away from the classic record producers like Quincy, Foster, Phil Spector. Like these guys, of course, they're, they're all around producers. They produce the track, they produce the music and they produce the vocals. But for me, I came in and splintered, splintered the whole thing off so that I could just focus on making sure that the artist got the best attention. So, so like when, when we started, when the, when, the, when the game got tied into or turned into having a beat maker versus a guy that is an all around finisher, the artist sort of gets, um, it's, the artist is kind of like an afterthought. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get the record done. Mm-hmm. You know, the producer gets the record done. The beat maker gets the record done. They get the top line on it. And then they go, all right, let's, let's have her sing it. Or the uh, artist is actually singing the demo or singing it as they're writing it. But that's two separate things. Like you got to be able to s- split everything up. And the only thing that you're focusing on is that vocal. So <laughs> vocal producer my way of getting the best thing is to make make sure that the artist knows that i'm not focused on anything other than making sure that they sound their absolute best it Mm -hmm. feels that they've given their absolute best performance from top to bottom without splintering off the attention from like i don't care about the kick i don't care about the snare i don't care about the keyboards i don't care about all the tricks i care about how does this feel i want to be able to solo this vocal and go, do you hear all of that emotion from top to bottom in this record? And if you have that, the music is just icing on the cake behind it. Early in your life, you, you had the, the luxury of, of working with the church. Let's yeah. call it that. And, and, and you were, you were, you were doing a lot of what you do now and uh, th- that foundation, how did it carry over into where you are now? And number two, would you say that when you hit, umbrella with uh rihanna that 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 that, that's where your confidence came from yeah so working i did 13 years of children's music ministry and uh and that experience what i learned from that and what what i what carried over from that into what i do now is people skills 101 Mm -hmm. um you know when you work in a church that, you know, when you're working at a church and you're in a leadership position, the uh, your main objective is to be able to function with all the programs every single week with volunteers. Mm-hmm. Nobody's getting paid. Like so as as a worship leader, I was responsible for making sure that I had a band every single week and um, you didn't want to wear the wear the musicians out or the singer. So what you're doing is you're putting together a schedule and you're everybody's volunteering every single weekend. So the thing that I learned was there's absolutely no way to get the best. To, there's absolutely no way to get the best out of people if they're volunteering their time, unless you're encouraging them and unless you're continually casting vision and encouraging vision to them as to where you're going, they have to feel like um, what I learned was people that are following you in a volunteer mode, they have to feel like, you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. They have to feel like, you know, that you're leading them in the right way and leading them to a specific goal. So that's the characteristic that I got from doing 13 years of ministry is, is first of all, we're all here together. We all, all have one common goal to get one thing done. And me as the leader, me as the gatekeeper, it's my responsibility to make sure that everybody on the team feels like they can accomplish exactly what we're all setting out to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you feel like there's a weak link in the process, there's a way of swapping out that weak link without that person feeling slighted or feeling, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, feeling slighted in any kind of way. uh, But also coming back, if you have to swap them out, coming back and encouraging them and let them know, here's where you missed it. Here's where I missed it in communicating with you. So now let's build on that and let's keep going. It's all about people skills. It's all about allowing people to be who they are um, and, and just working with them, just building a, 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 like a community type feeling. That's the one thing that I took from that. And the second thing that you asked me about, do I feel like when I hit umbrella with Rihanna, was that the thing that, that launched everything, right? Or that's where did I, did I get my, where I I got my confidence, right? Mm -hmm. I got my confidence 100% 
it started there. But it mm-hmm. took a little while for it to really settle into here because at first I, I, you know, I felt like, okay, yeah, you know, we wrote this song, we went and cut it on this lady named Rihanna and that, that's cool. And I had no idea what it was going to turn into. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, shortly after that, the song blew up. And shortly after that, I started getting asked by uh, other man by managers. Uh, Chris Hicks was was a manager. He managed Mary J. Blige, um, and he's a really good friend of ours down in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. He asked me if I uh, would come and produce some songs on Mary. And I think through that Mary process is when I really started getting confidence and going, okay, wait a minute, I think what I'm doing is special because what what would happen is the artist would go. I would cut them on records and they go, well, why don't I sound like this on the other records that I cut? Mm-hmm. And I go, I don't know. They said, well, can we just try? Can you cut, recut me on this record? And I would go, yeah. And I didn't do anything different. I didn't do all. The only thing I did was what I do, right. you know, the, my <laughs> approach, you know, my approach, uh, obviously my vocal chain and stuff like that, but everybody can have the same vocal chain, but you're still going to get a different performance. So it was just I, I do my approach and I realized, like, wait a second, there is a difference here. They actually sound different. And I started to break down what is it that I'm doing that other people aren't doing. And I, I felt I realized that what I'm doing is really going for emotion. I'm going for that performance, that old school performance, emotion in the performance, not relying on the tricks, not relying on the gear, not relying on the plugins, not relying on uh, the fact that I can melodyne whatever after the fact. It's like, no, if I if I get it right now, anything that I do on top of that is just going to be sweetening. Mm-hmm. You know, but that performance, that emotion, all that passion, you can't deny that. Question for you. The yeah. <clears throat> as you prepare people for the studio, are you and and to record are you ever asked, and is there a difference if you do do it, do people ask you or artists ask you to prepare them to do vocals on the road or come out and do something? And is that a different kind of thing? It is. a it, Yes. Uh, yes. I've had people ask me to come out on the road to, to help prepare them, you know, uh, mm-hmm. for sure. And, you know, I did uh, J-Lo's tour back in, I can't even remember what year it was, but mm-hmm. it was like after we did... Uh, on the floor. She did a world tour. I, I was there with her pre- prepping her for the show every single night, standing in front of the stage with her, um, just, you know, coaching her, you know, it's like a first base coach just going, mm, just relax, you know, cause you can tell when people's adrenaline yeah. takes over, you know, it kind of gets them to a place in a different space. So mm-hmm. that's, that's the capacity that I served in with her. And I was also part of the uh, front of house, um, uh, the, the mix of front of house, just making yeah. sure she sounded great. Yeah, um, it is two separate things. You've got your vocal coach and you have your vocal producer. Right. The vocal coach is the person that teaches the artist, you know, the singer. It really he enlights he or she enlightens them on the technical aspects of what it is they have of their voice. They're mm-hmm. two. Right. Mm hmm. And all of that and and all of that stuff is perfect. All that stuff is exactly like it, like it's supposed to be. They really focus on breathing. They focus on, you know, how's your voice today? You know, all that. Um, We need to make sure we warm you up before you sing. Mm -hmm. All those technical things to to get to be able to go for a long time, you Mm -hmm. know, within Mm -hmm. a performance. My thing as a vocal producer is the complete opposite of those things. Right. A lot of times um, and vocal 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 coaches don't like to hear me say this, but Mm -hmm. it's reality. Mm -hmm. I'm not sliding them. It's just a different thing. So as a vocal producer, I'm not worried at all about technical things. I'm worried about feeling. I'm worried Mm -hmm. about passion. I'm worried about performance. So there could be some things to where I would tell a vocalist to do that a vocal coach would tell them don't do that because that could harm your voice right. so i'm like, listen no like squinch it right here you know what i mean like mm-hmm. pinch it as you sing it and mm-hmm. for me i'm like you know because that, that's the vibe i need like that's the passion i need so right. for me i a lot of times i've had vocalists when i re- recognize that they've you know they're in the studio maybe they've just left their um 
vocal coach and they've got all the things in their head of the vocal coach. And the, and I can tell that that's going on because they're trying to be the, just trying to have the correct posture. And I go, listen, did you just, have you had formal training? And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, what, whatever you've learned from that person over the next couple of hours, throw all that stuff out the window. Let it go. Let, Let it, it go. go. Because we're going, we're going for passion. We're going for vibe. We're going for performance, not technical stuff. Mm. Um, so yeah, so it's it's two set, it's two different things, and you have to be able to, um, you, know, you just got to be able to dis- decipher what mode you're in. You know, there may be some times where a vocalist is is in the studio, and I do need them to go. Okay, something something's not right here. Let's let's get your vocal coach on the on the horn just to restore what's going on here, and then we'll get back into the pr- production vibe. I noticed Ooh. something a, a, a long time ago about you, and I, I, I ju- it, it just came back to my mind, and I, I don't I don't remember if I told you about it or if we discussed it, but I think it's something that the audience might enjoy. But um, when we were working and, and when we were working in, in um, together, um, the music that, that came near the end because the vocals are near the end of the process, yeah. uh, well, the, all the music was on a grid. And so it was like, but when you finished with your vocals, the vocals made the grid feel like it's moving around and grooving and flowing. Yeah. And, and, and I, I was so impressed by that. And, and to this day, I, I, I try to put that in my work, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So and, you know, I oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I, I was going to say one of the advantages for all three of us is is um, as you spent a lot of time in your craft, you get a lot of perspective, you get wisdom, you get to um and particularly if you've if you've managed to maintain a position of authority over time, because as you know, in our business and for audience, if you don't know this, this business is not like a subscription business. It doesn't automatically renew. Right. <laughs> Either you're good or right. you're out. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can be out by the time you're 25. Yeah. Um, or you can be in it till you're 75. Yeah. But but the people who are in it for a long time, that number begins to shrink and shrink and shrink, and you have you have to stay current. So one of the things that we get to do, which is, is precisely with you, is you now can look back because we have them on the show and see who's coming up. Yeah. Who who are disciples of Coop? Who are cutting corners? Who don't even know that they're cutting corners because yeah. of technology? They think they're killing it. Yeah. Um, and so, give me your perspective about what you see coming. What's deficient about it? What is? Give me the coup. Macro. Yeah, I see. You know, I see a lot of people, and I'm, I'm man, I'm completely humbled by the fact that I got, I get to say that I created the lane of the yeah. modern vocal producer, one hundred percent. And, you know, that's what it's all about. And I see a lot of great people that are coming up to do it. I see a lot of people who are really good at what at, at what they're doing. But I see a lot of people that are also they they're not sure if that's what they really want to do or if they are a vocal producer. Like, listen, man, being a vocal producer is more than uh, having having that credit on the back of an album. Like being a vocal producer means that. Like I've sat, I've listened, like I know what something is supposed to sound like. I know, I know what it's supposed to feel like. Um, and I feel like I, you know, it, it frustrates me because I, I, I see a lot of people who are trying to do it, but they have no business doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's not that's not being harsh. Like I just it gets frustrating because, you know, we're in this mode of of the game to where everything can be everything is easily accessible, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can have, you know, thank God for all the plugins that we have, but the plugins are a blessing and a a curse at the same time. Absolutely. They they give everybody the sense, they give anybody the sense that they can do everything. And you can't, like you can't, 
to be able to be a vocal producer and be in the game for a long time, you have to know that it's about feeling like the record has to feel a certain way. Like when I sit down, I'm not phoning it in. I'm not just capturing information. I'm not just going, all right, sing that line for me 17 times and I'm just going to get it 17 times and get you out of here. And then I'll go back and produce it or comp it. Of course, that's a part of the process, but I guarantee you every single record that I cut as you're listening down, I may have 10 to 15 different um, versions in the playlist, but mm -hmm. that one that you're listening through, listening to all the way down mm -hmm. is the one mm -hmm. like it's the vocal that I'm going with. I, and I, and all the options are just for me, if I need a breath or if I need another the or, you know, if I need it longer or another, you know, just another word with different timing. Those are just my little fine tune parts, mm -hmm. but it's never it's never trying to just get information so that I can continue to move on. Cause like, here's the thing. Everybody feels like now it's about quantity. It is not about quantity. It's about quality. Mm -hmm. And the frustrating part for me is that it, it turns into, um, you know, people feel like, man, if I can just get in and I can just cut as many as, as, as many songs that it secures me a position on the album. It's like, no, do one. It only takes one. And that that comes with production and that comes with writing and everything. It only takes one song to change your to change your life. Mm -hmm. So be focused on the quality of it, be, you know, not how many records you can cut, um, you know, because a lot of because everybody's now getting into this thing. I had a conversation with someone, you know, recently, um, you know, and it really just it really just spent me when it comes to vocal production. And, and how people are viewing music now and trying to put music together. And they're thinking, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but they're, they're thinking and creating like with mathematics or whatever. They're like the mathematics of this. I'm like, I'm like wait, what? <laughs> mathematics? But no, this is this is this is music. This is a feeling. And I think for me, I have to, you know, when I hear stuff like that, uh, you know, even though I'm the old guy, I'm the I'm the one of the elders in the you know in the game and usually in the room. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to watch your tongue. <laughs> especially <laughs> when it comes to vocal production, I'm like I can't let I can't just let that go by because what's happening right. is the more people that come in to do what we do, and I'm happy that people are that people are cre are wanting for vocal production to be their career mm -hmm. but we have to make sure that the more more people come in and how the system of the industry works that we don't cheapen the quality of work we don't cheapen mm -hmm. the hours that the you know that we've all put in to set the standard like we've set a standard for like i've i'm never going to lessen my standard as to what i feel like is a great performance because management or the label wants me to cut more records. You know, they want to get a bunch of records. And and also uh, there's some corollary damage that I mm -hmm. observe. Yeah. One yeah. is that people who don't have that connection to the fundamentals that you're talking about are actually hurting the artist and nobody knows it. Yeah. The Absolutely. artist doesn't know yeah. it. People don't know it. And you end up with something lesser and then the other part about the technology component <laughs> is it has created from my chair this institutional laziness. Yes, 100%. It passes as work to people, yeah. but it's not really the same thing. No, not and, at all. And so getting done is not the same as being great. Absolutely. They just want to get it done, and they got the tools to get it done, and then they'll farm out this and a specialist will do that and yeah. this, this this that and the other and yeah. what, what i find from my chair is that the check writers now are starting to push back on that mm -hmm. they're, they're starting to see through that and say wait 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 i i, I didn't hire you for this plug-in to do the work or this algorithm to do the work um and i can hear the difference and yeah. so stuff in the space has come into place where you have shoot offs. You have other things like prove to me that you're good for mm -hmm. free before mm -hmm. I assign all that kind of stuff. And and so 
this whole mindset of people who believe that's the norm, mm -hmm. that ain't the norm. No, not it, at all. It, being great is the norm and doing the work is the norm. And by the way, that will make you a star and sustain your income. Absolutely. You try to that. And, and Absolutely. folks that just goes by, I see it all the time from my chair and, um, yeah. and I kind of rail against it because you don't know if somebody's really good. Like they might be great up in there if they could shed the, that bad skin. Mm -hmm. You know yes, what I'm saying? And, and, and put it in perspective. Do you agree with that? Or do you see? I agree with that one. Yes, I agree with that 100%. It's like, um, there's, you know, there's, it's that, that would you say, would you say institutional laziness? What is yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And it's just and it's also just the everybody being so in a hurry to be recognized. It's Yo, like man. calm down, relax, do the work. And I, I always say this. Let your work speak for itself. Yes. Because um, what's happening is, you know, it's there's there's becoming this culture of, you know, producers or I would say the some there and. I agree with you 100% what you were saying about the person writing the check. There's also another side of the people that are writing the checks are actually are actually wanting to get something done so fast that what they're doing is they're putting valuable artists or a potential valuable artist in the room with people who are not experienced not at, ready. What, they're, at what they what they need from them, especially yep. when it comes to vocal production. The vocals are the absolute most important part of the record, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I see a lot is, you know, tr people trying to get a lot of something, something for nothing. It's mm -hmm. like, no, if, listen, uh, Tricky, Tricky Stewart, my cousin said this to me a long time ago. Like when I, when I first started working it before we did Umbrella, he said, listen, you know, there's a reason why that microphone right there cost Thirty thousand dollars, and there's a reason why that one costs fifteen hundred dollars. There's a difference that you're gonna hear the difference in that thirty thousand dollars. And I went, oh yeah, there we go. So you're gonna get, you know, the whole thing. You're gonna get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna, if you wanna slight, if you wanna have a, a performance that's not excellent, go ahead and spend the the two hundred bucks. Go mm -hmm. ahead, spend the two hundred bucks. Put the put your your valuable artist in the studio with an engineer who claims that they can produce vocals. That's not the case. Just because you're an engineer does not mean that you are a vocal producer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a vocal producer knows like when something goes down, I know, though, that's the right one. Even when the artist is going, mm, you sure? I am like, absolutely. Trust mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. when, you come in, when you come in here and hear this, you're going to go, oh, I'm right. glad you let that one go. Yep. So, you know, engineers are what they're doing. It, like the engineers are focused on, they're trying to make sure that they got all the plugins, they're dragging, dragging and dropping. And it's like, no, when you're vo producing vocals, I don't have time to be dragging and dropping. We're singing. Right, right. <laughs> we're singing right. and they're feeling it, you know? So, right. You said, uh, which which uh, kind of is in the same flow. Um, simplicity is is the best thing that, that that you can think about when you're when you're working. You know, and and, yeah. and I'm working on a, on a I'm working on a mix right now that's got how many how many two hundred four hundred <laughs> four hundred tracks four hundred <laughs> tracks. I can't even I can't even count past a hundred. Yeah. And can you hear all that? You know what I mean. <laughs> well, yeah. To, to be, to be, to be, um, uh, you know, I don't, want, I don't, want, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but yeah. it's basically what you do in that situation is you just take twenty tracks and put them in into one auxiliary track, and then, and then you, then you yeah. mute the, the 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 twenty tracks. But yeah, mm -hmm. simplicity, man. It's it's so hard, but it's simplicity. Just, is, yep. You're absolutely right. It's the key, especially when you're producing vocals, <laughs> you know, in the whole process, it simplicity is key absolutely. because, because it's because we're 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 everything is com complex anyway. So when we get in the lab, I need it. I need everything to be as, as simple as possible so that we can just perform. It's easy to say once you've been sitting around for a while and can observe it. But if you look at the greats. Almost in anything, but certainly in music. Mm -hmm. listen to a Beatle melody, it seems simple. 
Yeah. What, 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 what Bob Dylan did, the way Prince could speak to us, yeah. um, the essence of a James Brown, uh, Start Me Up by the Rolling Stones. Things, Absolutely. It feels simple, yeah. but it's not. It's almost easier to be complex. It's yeah. harder to be simple. And the Absolutely. goal that you're shooting for, um, shit, I go through that with, with our show. Mm. Like, yeah, we could yeah. spin plates and do all the other yeah. kind of shit. That's not what's kept <laughs> yeah. us here for twelve <laughs> years. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and, and 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 it's and and so it's hard for people coming up to understand that if it hasn't been set up for them mm -hmm. to know that that's what you're trying to go for. Yeah. Because what you're getting is be complicated, use this tool, be fast, be quick, be this, and what you spoke to earlier, and God knows I know this, is when we came up, it wasn't important that you were also a brand. Right, exactly. And when you when you're when you're focused on being a brand, it gets in the way of, of your craft. One hundred percent. Right. Yes, one hundred percent because what you're because what you're focusing on now is notoriety. You yes. know, listen, for me, you know, I, I battle this all the time. I Man, my work speaks for itself. I've been doing this a long time and every single record speaks for itself. And yeah. when you're in that type of position, you could give two shits about what other other people think. Like I oh, honestly, sure. I honestly get to a point to where I don't I, I honestly don't want to be recognized or, right. or um, you know, when I say I have I battled this all the time, I use uh, I use let me. Let me use the Grammys as a as a um, as an example. Mm -hmm. For years, I, I battled in my mind of going, "How come I'm not ex like I'm up for Grammys?" Right? I'm I'm literally nominated for Grammys, and I go, and I just sit and I go, "Why am I not as excited as everybody else is about this?" Yeah. And I think the past couple of years, this this year, I really realized it's because because you don't care about that that's not why i do what i do mm -hmm. i do what i do so that i can number one so i can take care of my family mm -hmm. and and i i'm using all i care about is using my craft to the best of the ability mm -hmm. and when you're doing that and you're in that mode and you're continually flowing that thing is almost a for me it's a distraction it's a it's just another thing that i have to go man whatever like yeah i just, I just want to do me <clears throat> mm -hmm. um I just want to do me and just keep going, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I can, I can, I can, I can sum that up in one word. It's a lifestyle for us. It's yeah. not something yeah. we have to do. It's something we're born with and have that lifestyle. I'm, my lifestyle is pretty simple. Yeah, absolutely. I, up, I mix a record. Here's the other interesting thing um, to sort of bring it full circle. We're not done. No, not and at all. So with everything <laughs> that's moving forward. And people coming up behind, you know, um, and um, we're also, uh, I, I can speak for myself, and I, I'm competitive. Yeah. And, and the competition now is not for to be recognized. I mean, Grammy Week was just here. There were 34 parties in four days. Right. <laughs> and, and literally, I had a list of 34 parties in four days, and you end up making choices that oh, I can't go to the P&E wing because I went to Ricky Reed and Lizzo's party, and then I went to Manny's party. And what, so I was with somebody who is fairly prominent in the business, <clears throat> and she said to me at some point in time, she's president of a metaverse company, she said, my God, does everybody know you? <laughs> and I was like, it's why I don't necessarily well, and and these are insider parties, so it's not yeah. like it's it's not like it's public. Yeah, it's yeah, like the yeah. best of the best in the yeah. business. Yeah, and they're coming up and they're saying, "Man, this and love the show and her." Ah, I picture. Okay. Yeah. Flattering, love it. Yeah. Worked hard for yeah, it over sir. twelve years. Absolutely. Worked hard for it. Laid it on the line. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, cool. I could stay at home. Mm -hmm. I'm good. And just let the next show we put out or the award show that we do or what we do at NAM and have people go, yeah. damn, they did it again. <laughs> that's that is much more important to me than than the than the other stuff. And that's kind of a good place to get to. Right. So I can have balance in my life. Yes. I, I love that. 
I absolutely love that. And it's also exciting when when you when you when you find yourself when people call you. For me, it's exciting when people go, "Oh man, congratulations!" I go, "For what?" It's like, "Oh, you're just, you're up for two Grammys." I was like, "Wow, absolutely." Wow. But oh, that, really? listen, yeah. being up for Grammys and winning a Grammy don't change one thing. I still got to get my ass in the studio the next day and and do what I do so that <clears> I can <throat> keep doing so I can keep living my life. You know, a, a quick, funny story. OK, so back when print when Purple Rain came out, yeah, <laughs> um, I went to the premiere. The town painted Hollywood Boulevard purple, purple. at this big party and Prince came around the corner, cut off the street in the longest purple limousine I'd ever seen. Uh, yeah. uh, first of all, the fact that the limo was purple. Anyways, <laughs> I took a friend of mine who was a model, good looking, had no interest in me. I was just trying to front and, <laughs> and <laughs> literally was fronting. And a little guy came up to me and said, Hey, I, man, you know, you work at a black record company and I work with a band and God, I'd love to talk to you about it sometime. I was just kind of nice, sloughed him off. He came to my office the next day and, or like a week later and said, Hey, remember we met together and this, that, and the other. And I was just being nice. Like this guy's yeah. really annoying. And he yeah. said, you know, you're a football fan. I was like, yeah, I am. He's like, well, why don't you come out and watch football? And I was like, oh, okay, this could get creepy. <laughs> and, and, and he said, I said, well, come out where? And he said, Malibu. And I said, Malibu, you live in Malibu? And he said, yeah, yeah. He said, I work with the band. And he had mentioned the band, but I didn't pay attention to it. Got what it, right, turned out, right. the band was Fleetwood Mac. Oh, snap. And cool. so when, when, when I pulled out there, and this is what made me go, he said, well, you drive out PCH, you got to go kind of far, <laughs> and then you go to Paradise Cove, and then you turn left, and then you go <laughs> under PCH, yeah. And go back into I was like, wait, you go under <laughs> under PCH, right? Under PCA. So now I'm I'm intrigued. So I go, I knock on the door, I find this, I go back in this place, I knock on yeah. the door. Yeah. And Mick Fleetwood opens the door. Oh, snap. <laughs> and I had not picked up that Mick was his roommate. Oh wow. So so I'm now hanging out. I'm sorry, God. Stop. <laughs> so, so I'm now hang I'm now like Okay, her be cool. Is yeah. Nick Fleetwood? You yeah, know, yeah. you should act like you've been around stars and this, that, and the other. But yeah, here's yeah. what it speaks to about the Grammys. Yeah. We're in this house, lofty stuff. It turns out this was a second engineer who, when the first engineer got sick, the band gave him a chance to be the engineer. Mm -hmm. They gave him one point on the record. It turned out the record was Tusk or something like something crazy. He made 700 grand from one of the things and he and Mick were tight. So he had that trust factor. I watched yeah. that yeah. inside. We're watching football and I'm, I'm sitting there going, okay, Herb, you're a black guy from Canada. How did yeah. you end up in this position? Act yeah. like you can handle it. Yeah. And I, I go downstairs and laying on the side is this Grammy replica. Wow. And I said to his name is Richard Dashett. Great guy. I said, Richard, man, where did you get this Grammy like replica? I, I got to get one for the house. He said, <laughs> oh, and he dusted up turning. He said, it's not a replica. He said, that's the shit we got last year. I was yeah. like, wait. And, and, and the attention that they had on getting Grammys had yeah. nothing to do with <laughs> what they want to do in terms of making great songs. Yeah. Absolutely. I literally thought it was a replica, like a $20 yeah. Yeah, replica. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. laying on his side. And I was like, <laughs> man, what kind of, so, so it's interesting um, and, and, and also a really honor of mine as a dear friend of, of yours, that the greats of which you are, mm -hmm. uh, that is, that is ensconced in history. Thank you. you not only did, but, but you didn't just start it. You are, you created the bar. Yeah. And, and, and the greatness and the fundamentals of it for people to follow. And I know yeah. because people who know that we're friends, who do what you do, they come up and go, man, it's always, man, there's a breathless kook there. Mm, man. Um, and, and, and I think in one way is to sort of wrap it all up. That's kind of our obligation too. Yeah. It, it's important for us to say, no, no, no. This is the bar of greatness. Mm, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Shooting that. And, and, and for all the generations who follow us and so on and so forth, um, you know, I tell people, <clears throat> you know, I get a lot of praise for lots of different things. And, and in fact, in some ways, I honestly believe I've earned it. Yeah, absolutely. They're not, they're not doing it because it's something they need to do to say hello to me. I'm a friendly cat. 
Yes. They're saying we've watched and we've earned. And what I tell them is then if you're going to emulate it, then pay it forward. Yeah, absolutely. And that's my thing. I'm, I'm always, I'm always looking to pay it forward because, you know, somebody, get, you know, I got a shot. You yeah. know what I mean? I got a shot and yeah. I was really fortunate that God blessed me with the gift and the temperament to be not not only to just do what I do, but the temperament to be able to stick it out and stay in a place that this is one of the other things. I know we want to wrap it up. This is one of the other things w- because there's so many people and there's so much going on. Um, everybody has this mentality of and they want to get recognized so, so much so bad that they're, they're always working to trade up. It, it, yeah. it becomes, that becomes the job of, okay, well, it ain't, it don't look like it's going to happen over here this quick or within the next three months. So let me move over here. Maybe it's over here. And it's like, no, that's not the way to get it. The way to get it is to have, is to, is to just be like, all right, let me just, let me, first of all, let me count my blessings. Let me uh, look at what's happening. Let me, is, am I, is anything happening where I am right now. Yes. Yeah, man, there's forward moving. Is everything happening that I want to have happen? No, it's not. But okay, no, this is the lane. Let's do this. Like I've been there before. Yeah. So I know what it feels like to feel like, you know, the the next thing is coming from over here. But what I also learned is when you're doing that, you're starting over, you you know, every time. Every time I use Rihanna as the absolute perfect example of this. I've been producing her vocals for so many years now, like, you know, 10, 12 years now. Mm. But it's not just it's just not the vocals. What it is, is she understands. I love the fact that she's such a loyal person and she's Mm -hmm. number one loyal. But she also recognizes she's she's brilliant in the fact that if she has a team of people that do things for her, why do you, why would you keep swapping out parts when mm-hmm. it's working? Mm-hmm. So what mm-hmm. that creates is a really, it, it creates a great relationship, um, you know, between the artist and, and the vocal producer or the writers to we're creating something together. That's supposed mm-hmm. to last forever. You're never mm-hmm. going to get that. If you're always trying to trade up and find the next thing or the next big thing someplace else. Um, so yeah, that, that's the other thing. It's like, I want to encourage, like, I want to speak to all the young up and comings, find a camp, like find a camp to work with. When things start working, just stay there. Keep mm-hmm. like, stay, stay, stay the course. That's what it is. Stay the course. Cause if you can do that and then watch things flourish and start and, and watch your whole thing come together, it makes it sweeter on the other side mm-hmm. when, when the thing pops off. It's real nice when you can sit back like me and uh, when we won our tricky one, two Grammys and I won a Grammy at this last at the last Grammys afterwards. I didn't even go to the Grammy thing. I didn't even go to the Grammy after party. I went and met tricky, my my cousin, tricky, Mark and and our people like our team of people and we had dinner and we had wine together and we celebrated together mm. and we talked of, and that you know the big thing that we talk about the fact mm. that we've been doing this the fact that we have that between trick and i we have 13 grammys in our family like that's the sweet stuff that's the rich stuff you know not Oh man, I did over here, and w- it, this happened because I politic. No, this happened because we got in the lab and we got our work done. And and, yeah. and and then once that dinner's over, you went home in your Ferrari. So <laughs> <laughs> actually, I didn't. I got in a little a little Ford thing, a little rental thing. <laughs> but when um, I got home, I got home to something nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, here, 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 here's what I think is, and, and I think Dave would attest to this as well, too. Um, we're standing the test of time for a reason. Yeah. Um, and I want to have you back on at some point in time, not too, not in a too far distance or one of our yeah. live things, because now we're going into things where streaming and the metaverse and, ad- and, and avatars and other kinds of stuff, it may not change what we do. Right. We may change how we access what we do and all that kind of stuff. But there's new horizons for us to reset, to continue to set that bar. Absolutely. And, and we should do that and benefit from it. 
yes. so that the, the the blessings come back mm -hmm. to us. Um, that's part of keeping sharp and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm a basketball freak, and and the greats, LeBron and Kobe and so on and so forth, they, and Michael Jordan, they say, don't cheat the process. Yeah, don't don't ever cheat the process. You cheat the process. It shows up in your check. It Ooh. shows up in your reputation. Huge. It shows up, it, and you can be over in a minute. Yep. Um, and audience, if you ever want to take something, because we said a lot about Rihanna, but what we haven't talked about is Cher, and what we haven't talked about is Celine Dion and Kendrick Lamar, and I could go on, Mary J. Blige, Usher. Yeah. Uh, Kook has done it all, seen it all. He is the godfather for a reason. And one of the things I would like you to leave with is remember these fundamentals. One, simplicity. Two, be a nice guy. Be a nice guy. Three, don't cheat the process. And four, learn people skills. It's about trust. Sure. It, it's, it's about that. And once you, once you know that, then your, what you do can come to the fore. But if you try, if you don't have those other kinds of things, yeah. you're just a technique monster. Yeah, absolutely. And, Absolutely. Right? 100%. And, and Herb, if, if this is okay with you and Dave, Absolutely. I would love to, uh, like, and I know this is going to, this will turn into a thing, but I know how valuable being a vocal producer is to yes. the game. Yes. And my, part of my job is to make sure that that bar stays up here and the, and the real fundamentals for being a great vocal producer stay intact. So I'm, I'm offering people that, like up people that really feel like they want to be vocal producers, mm -hmm. hit me up, like hit me up and let's, let me, let me show you the things that are really key. Let me show you how to tap in to the things that are really key for being a great vocal producer, not just a guy that sits in a room and captures information, but a guy that knows that will, that can actually have longevity doing this in the game. So this is a mic hey. and I just hey. dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> My drop. Uh, can can they, I put in, can I put in a, a request? Yes. Okay. Um, how do you get the 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 vibrato on your vocals? Ooh, how do I get how do I get it on there? Man, I have that artist sing them. It's like it, it, a lot of times, not not a lot of times, all the time. It comes from them naturally. You know, and at, at that point, I'm just I'm just dictating how much oh, sometimes, God. you know, yeah. some artists can have just a little oh, too fast okay. of vibrato. And I'll be like, nah, slow that down. That's not that's a little too extreme and it sounds weird. Uh, but then I go. But then I'm able to coach them into finding that sweet spot. Okay. Not okay. too much, not too little. Mm -hmm. uh, he is uh, Ku Carell. He is a friend. And he's a bad boy. That's really what that is. Thank he's you, a, my brother. He's a bad boy. Um, got more to talk to you about. By the way, I offered you up to John McBride for Inside Blackbird. Um, nice. He cannot wait for you to, to do that. We'll, we'll figure all that out. Uh, audience and to our esteemed folks who keep us here, your potential is unlimited when you learn and emulate from somebody like our guest today. Um and you yeah. know what you'll find out? You'll find out if you have it or if you don't. Absolutely. Um, sometimes finding out that you don't have it so that you can go on and do something else is as liberating as not going down the wrong path forever. Right. And, that's, and right. that's what you also learn about that. Um, he's Ku Carell. Uh, the other guy's Dave Pensado. Mm. I'm just a black guy with a job. And we'll <laughs> see. <you. laughs> hey, we'll man, see. don't forget my 5%. Hey, <laughs> uh, is is that your five? That, you know what? That's true. Dave is five percent black, and that's why he wears his pants low. I love uh, it. True, <laughs> so, true, 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 true. That. Anyways, let me. Hey. Yeah, bro. True that. <laughs> so let me get out of here before we get killed by the NAACP. <laughs> uh, thank you, Kook, and we'll see hey, you guys man. next time.